What's happening, Fusion friends? Welcome to another episode. Today, I've got a box. You know what that means, unboxing time. This is a special unboxing because it's the last unboxing of 2020. Can't believe it, the year's already passed. Crazy, but we got more fun stuff coming up for 2021, so no worries, including, yes, you probably could guess it, more unboxings. But today, as you can see from the side of the box, we got a sixth sense box in. This was stuff from Black Friday. Um, I finally got it. I I've had it for a little while, just haven't got around to doing the unboxing. So enough yapping about all this, let's get into it. Okay, starting off with some soft plastics. These are pretty new. These uh, just came out a little while ago. These are the four and a half inch whales from Sixth Sense. Grabbed a few different colors there. This is what they call gill dust. I grabbed some green pumpkin juice. I like that. It's got some red and greenish, bluish flakes in there. Wanted something white. I couldn't really tell the color difference, so I got both of these. This is a platinum white. More like a bone, it's like a whitish yellow color kind of to it. And then I grabbed those, the pearl white, more of your kind of standard pearly bright white fluke. So I thought these were pretty cool. I seen these a while back. Saw these, saw these is correct English, right? I had somebody correct me on that. I saw these a while back. That's what they look like. They've got a pretty good looking paddle tail on back. You can see, you know, pretty much your standard paddle tail design. I like the front of it, everything looks nice. You'll notice it's got those little fins sticking out the side. Kind of interesting. I don't know if that's going to help it ride, you know, normally, if that's going to kind of be like a, a stabilizer deal on it. I don't know. Be kind of cool to see how they do. And, of course, they do have the uh, the hook channel inside there. Haven't got a chance to use these yet. We're kind of going back and forth on ice here in Iowa. So, hopefully, this Friday, since I have it off, um, I'll be able to go out and do some ice fishing. I've got some fun stuff planned. But, uh, yeah, the whale. Okay, next up, I grabbed some of their plastics. Um, this was when they had like the 20, what was it, 25% off all their stuff. I've never really used any of their craw type plastics. Um, I've got a few that I already like, but I saw these and these look a little bit different. I liked them, cool shape to them. This is the 3.3 stroker craw. Now, a lot of you have probably already used these. I like the fact that it had essentially like the big, huge dual twister tail grub claws on it. Um, I know there's a ton of different brands of these out there on the market, uh, but just something a little bit different. I like that it had a solid kind of oval shaped body. So the whole body is hard. You can see it doesn't get skinny in the middle. It doesn't get any weird shape. It's just all one thick regular shape. Good for a Texas rig. Um, this should also fit well on the back of a jig as a trailer. And this color is what? Bluegrass Magic, that bright blue on one side and the kind of that green pumpkin with some, I guess you call it like a greenish flake inside there. Just a cool color. Uh, the craws we have have that blue on the bottom of them, usually like a dark brown, almost a black and blue. So I think that's why black and blue works so well here, but a natural color with that kind of blue dust color on the bottom. I'm excited to give that a try. Cool little bait, good profile, not too big. Again, I got that green pumpkin juice you can see there. Mexican spice, which is like a brown with orange flake and then a chartreuse belly. Almost like your summer craw, green pumpkin with chartreuse belly, but they've added some flashy flake to it. But this one they call dark water bug. Straight black on one side, almost like a June bug purple with blue flakes on the other side. Really neat color, good for dirty, muddy water. You've got that bright color, um, you know, that bright purplish uh, flake, but also that black. So when you're fishing in muddy water, any sort of dark color, black and blue, black and purple, it's really just to make a silhouette in that really dirty water. But for whatever reason, black and purple is a confidence color for me. I know a lot of people just default to black and blue, but black and purple to me is uh, is where it's at. So I like that one. Okay, let's move over and talk about some swim jigs. I got all of these are in 3 8 ounce. Uh, now I've used the, the uh, 6 cent swim jigs before. I just ran out. I grabbed a few of them when Gander went out uh, the very first day I stopped. But man, a lot of the stuff was so picked over after just the first few days. All this, you know, the good looking colors and stuff, all that was gone, but grabbed a few of these. This one they call Cajun Bluegill, like that. Now the uh, the six cent swim jigs are nice. I'm sure there's probably a few different companies that do this now, but um, at the time when I used my first six cent jig was actually before I got them at Gander, but uh, the first time I used it, it was kind of nice to see that on their swim jigs, they have a screw keeper. So you can see there when you put your swim bait on there, it screws on. So great if you're skipping, great if you're trying to bring your swim jig through grass. Um, anytime you're going to come up against resistance, uh, you know, if you fish like a swim jig or a moving bait like that, and you're trying to pull it through stuff or rip it through stuff, you're always fighting your soft plastic. I don't think they trimmed all the jig skirt there, but I have to cut that. Um, but I love, I love that screw keeper on there. The colors that Sixth Sense puts out and stuff, 
absolutely killer colors. Love the eyes, love the skirt. Just kind of a darker color with some kind of bright accents on the bottom, like a black and blue up top, and your chartreuse and orange on bottom. Cool color, great for dirty water. Excited to give that a try. Good uh, stout hooks on theirs as well. Uh, and then of course with the swim jig, usually you don't have as thick of a brush guard, which they don't either. So good, solid little uh, swim jig there. I've had good luck with it. Let's see, I also grabbed this color, the Sunfish Spawn. So you can see there, it's got a little bit of the kind of green pumpkinish up top, then it gets very bright toward the bottom with chartreuse and yellow, good bright color. Bluegill Spawn, that's just your regular old bluegill spawn look there. Kind of cool, it's got that green pumpkin, kind of iridescent, orange on the belly. Just a really neat looking color. And let's see, what was the last one called? Neon Spawn, that's what the last guy looks like. So again, just kind of slight variations, really just whichever one you're gonna have the most confidence with, but uh, all those look good. I'm really excited to try this one, that Cajun Bluegill. It's dark, just a different kind of look. I don't really throw anything that color. White or like a green pumpkin is usually my swim jig color, so. I'm excited to give that color a try. Okay, next, sticking with the uh, the moving deals, I grabbed some of their jig heads. If you've been around my channel, you've seen me use these before, and I've talked about these. I like how they have that turned up nose with the line tie on top. I feel like these ride over brush really well. So if you've got a log, it comes up over it. Now, I don't use an open hook, um, I should correct myself, in the real brushy, like fingery stuff, but against like big logs, big sticks, larger timber, uh, you're a lot less likely to get hung up with an open hook like this, but when you get in the real brushy, like, you know, Christmas tree type looking stuff and a whole bunch of pallets stacked on each other, you're going to lose these all day. But against like big logs or big tree branches and such, uh, pretty good. And then same for rocks. So like along riprap, um, I use these in my local lake because they skip over the top rocks. You don't want to let it sink all the way down and you want to keep it just over it. Now, I had a thought here, let's see. I'm gonna take a quarter ounce, I'm gonna rig up one of those whales just to see what it looks like to show you because again, I can get it out. These also have that screw keeper on there as well. So same as the swim jig. Now here's also a little secret tip. You know a lot of times when you put the, uh, the hook next to the body and you're trying to memorize and put your finger there, one thing you can do is put it next to it and mark just a little spot with the hook. So for example, what I'll do here is check and see exactly where I want it to go. So right there, so instead of trying to hold my thumb there, I'm just going to take this and make a little prick in the soft plastic. I don't know how well y'all can see that if it's really showing up there. But I made just a little prick. You can see it's kind of broken up there. That's how I know exactly where to bring my hook through and then start screwing it on. So let's do that. All right, just like so. That's the first step. And then from here, I'm just going to take and twist this around. I'm going to twist the soft plastic around this. So don't overcomplicate it. I'm literally just going to take this like so and start twisting it around. I'm going to push it kind of up as I twist. And then when I get to a point here where that tail needs to come around, I'm going to let that tail come around and then keep twisting. That's all you got to do. All right, there we go. Just like that. So you can see once you get it screwed on nice and straight, you want to make sure it comes right through the center of the back. That way, as you can see the bait, nice and straight, the hook's right in the middle. That's what you get, a good straight swim bait you can see there. You don't want it to be all kinked and wobbly because then you're going to have a swim bait that doesn't swim right. So if you need to, you know, if you're kind of unsure where it needs to go, err on the side of going too far back. That way, if it's kind of bunched up like this, you got it too far on there, you can take your fingers and just kind of cut that bait a little bit with your fingers, and it'll sit nice and straight on there. So it's always better to go a little bit too far back with the hook than uh, too far forward because then you got to take it off and you can kind of ruin the nose of it. But. Okay, before we get over to the crankbaits, I grabbed some skirts. I've actually got a little segment coming up uh, that I'm going to be doing soon, making your own lures. I've got a few things you can kind of do as a hobby in the winter. Of course, here in Iowa, it gets kind of boring. So making jigs, you can get pre-made jig skirts like this. So instead of tying your own jigs, now of course these are going to have the rubber um, skirt keeper on them instead of being hand tied. That's one nice thing when you purchase uh, hand tied jigs, you know, from smaller companies, they put the care into actually picking, you know, whatever skirt you want and hand tying it with like a wire or a cord. So this will not have it, but Six Sense has some beautiful skirts. So they call this color black and blue melon. So on the back there, you can see it's like black and blue. On the front side, it's like a blue with a little bit of iridescent color in it. Just a really neat color. I like that one. Sticking with that color, this is called Smoke Melon Blend. So you can see it's got that purple iridescent glitter on it. Flip it over to the back, and again, you've got that green pumpkin with that iridescent kind of glowing blue color to it. That is like a killer, killer bluegill imitation for around here. Awesome colors on that. I also grabbed these two. I didn't know they were going to look so similar. This is June Bugger. So you've got your, you know, purple, blue, June bug look to it. And then on the back, 
it's basically like a straight black. Now, when I was looking at them online, I thought they looked a little bit different, but the second one I got, Bama Blucher. So this is again, your kind of that Bama uh, purple, blue glitter, and then the back is like a green pumpkin. I thought this was gonna be a little bit lighter, but still a cool color, green pumpkin purple mix versus a, a purple black. I like both of those. And of course, the hot color lately that everybody wants in jig skirts, that goldish, reddish, orange color. Uh, jackhammers in these were sold out for I don't know how long in that fire crawl or whatever they call it. They call it Rayburn Red in six cents, but just looks cool. Jigs, you could put it on a, a swim jig. You could put this on a chatterbait. If you've got a regular black chatterbait or whatever, you could throw this on. You've got a bunch of different options you can do with some uh, aftermarket skirts. Okay, getting into the treble hook lures. I grabbed two of these. I wish I would have grabbed more because I'm really happy with these. This is the Crush Mini 25 MD. So this goes, and see there, dies four to seven feet, quarter ounce. Just a little crankbait, but gosh, it looks so good for, you know, those spots where guys are throwing those larger crankbaits and such. You want something a little more finesse like than this. Very subtle rattle to it, and look, just a little dude. It's smaller like than your normal little 1.5. I would say it's like a 1.0 size, probably, uh, if you're used to using like the Lucky Craft or the Strike King. Look at the colors on there. What do they call this dude? Baby crappy. Look at that, man. It's cool looking, little plastic. I like that they have the oval line ties on their stuff instead of the, um, the circle split rings. A very cool, cool little finesse bait. And I'll kind of show you this compared to some of the others as far as size goes. I've actually never used their square bill. Um, so I know Baxter the bait man, great guy. If you haven't checked out his channel, do that. Um, he's big on the six cents stuff. Uh, he's also got a code, so I got all this on the Black Friday deal, so it was like, what, 25% off, whatever it was, but um, if you ever need to restock up on stuff, go over to his channel, check it out. I think he's got like a 10% off code, but check out these. Just some cool little square bills from Six Cents. I'll take one out. This is Lava Crawfish. Nice looking size square bill. You know, it's pretty much your typical 1.5 size. Um, the thing I like about all the Six Cents stuff, they all come with sticky, sh uh, I was going to take, I can't even talk. Sticky, sharp hooks. That's what I was trying to say. Good golly. But I like how it goes from that orange up into that red. I actually made some lipless that looked almost just like this this year that destroyed it early in the year for me, that cold water in the spring. Uh, if you're not a believer in the reddish orange colors in the spring, you're missing out. I didn't jump on that bandwagon until way, way, way late, and I should have earlier. But cool color. I like the square bill. Good uh, small size. Ooh, kind of a finesse rattle, too. Almost like a one-knocker. Interesting. I figured it'd have a louder rattle. I like that. Not real big, you know, annoying clicky clacky sound. Okay, next up I have Clown Gill. Just a very nice bright color. You can see the top of it there is like a purple. Those stripes kind of go up. It's got the orange stripes, the chartreuse, and that orange belly. Really cool color. I've got Baby Sunfish. So again, your greens, yellows, orange spot on the belly, kind of that pearl belly. You can see that green goes all the way up to a top with a little darker on top there. Shad Pro. I love the uh, like reflective scales that they put on these. This one they call Craw Fire, kind of the spin off of the Fire Tiger, that chartreuse into the yellow, orange belly. I like that. Look at the eyes on that one. And last, I had to get one of the Jaint Juice. Speaking of back to the bait man, I think he designed that color for him, which happens to be one of my favorite colors. Chartreuse and purple is like one of my all time favorites, kind of like black and purple. I feel like guys go to like a, uh, a chartreuse black back. I've had really good luck with a chartreuse purple back as well, but you don't hear guys talk about it. Kind of like black and blue jigs versus black and purple. I've got more confidence in black and purple, just me, but I know it's probably a weird confidence thing. Cool color, jaint juice. Oh, and just to show you size comparison, that was that little mini. Look at that compared to that 50X. That size difference, just a little tiny dude. I like it though. Very cool little finesse crankbait. Okay, I grabbed one of their swim baits, the Flow Rider 130. I thought it was an interesting look to it. 1.6 ounces and it's a slow sink, 130 millimeter length. Y'all know I was trying to do more with the swim bait game this year. Uh, admittedly, I just suck with swim baits. Oh, not much movement out of this at all though. That's got a very, very short window of movement. You compare that to uh, like a S, S wave or whatever. I don't know how that's going to do. I don't know if this is, you know, supposed to have that uh, tighter kind of slashing action. The more movement you get out of the sides, the more you're going to have that kind of side searching S motion. Those Jerry Regos or whatever, um, I had good luck on those, and they're also cheap, like 
16 bucks. I know relatively cheap, but in the swim bait game, guys are charging a hundred and some dollars for these now, but I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about that. I figured it would be more of a small glider. Comment below and let me know if you've used one of these. Again, I am not a swim bait master. Uh, I have yet to catch a fish on a large glide bait, but I do know the basics of it, and the more movement you have, the wider it's going to go. So, I don't know. Kind of interesting. Colors and everything on it are great, though. Sixth Sense really does have some of the best paint jobs out there in the market, I think. Again, good sharp hooks, and those are nice beefy hooks, too. So, good thing is you don't have to change out your hardware, but we'll give that due to try a little glider. Okay, I am no stranger to these guys. If you saw my uh, my top lures, the Sixth Sense Provoke uh, is really one of my favorite jerk baits out there. Killed it for me. Well, I was going to say last year. This year, technically still. Uh, just got a couple different colors. This is the Cherry Limeade. These are half ounce, 106 millimeter long. They're supposed to be a slow floating suspending. I know it's a real slow float um, in that cold water. They'll pretty much stick right there. So, had good luck with those. I just kind of got a wild color. Bright chartreuse yellow with uh, some pink. Why not? I guess it's more of like a red Cherry Limeade. That guy they call 4K Gizzard. Again, it's got those reflective little scale deals on it. That's more of a, like a brownish color up top, but again, your white belly. I like that one. I wanted to get something with that kind of flashy sides for some, uh, you know, summer days where it's got that brighter color out, or a brighter color, brighter sun out. Really get that flash going off on them. I like that. And then this one, they completely knocked out of the park. I got to take this one out. This one they call 4K Bluegill. I think I showed that to you in one of those square bills. Look at that, dude. My golly. They've got the, uh, the kind of green pumpkin going up into the glitterish brown with a blue on the very top of it. Kind of the iridescent look. Some pink in the middle. Almost looks like a trout too. Orange pearl belly. Just a really cool looking color. Again, super sticky sharp hooks. And I like that it has the three sets of hooks on it for you. All right, what else do we have here? Going back to those crankbaits, I've never used any of their like deeper diving cranks. I think I had one lipless that I lost before. This is called the Curve 55. So this is a five to nine foot diving crankbait. Um, this one I actually posted on Instagram if you follow me on there. If you don't, what are you doing? Go follow me. Pester me. Send me questions. I don't care. I like to talk. Clearly because you ramble on in some of your videos, Debo. But look at that, dude. What color do they call this? Crackle Cross. So these go five to nine feet, three eighths of an ounce weight. Just a cool looking, you know, like your regular six foot diving KVDs. Um, I threw the heck out of those, but Kind of branching out, trying to throw some new stuff, um, trying to get out on the boar, boar, boat more this year. And like a little six-foot diver like this is just so awesome when you're fishing riprap banks. Really cool color. Notice they've got that crackle on the belly like a custom paint job. Destroyed that colorway. Kind of your see-through white and pink. What do they call this? Smallmouth rose. Just a real nice, light, subtle, natural color there. I like that. Talking bright again, we got the neon crawl. Look at that. Brown and black up top chartreuse green and yellow on there really cool looking bright craw just because it's different black and red craw look at that you can barely see them it's got like the maroon kind of purple accents i got it because it reminded me of tequila sunrise tequila sunrise crank yes sir i'll throw that and i guarantee if my old man sees it he's gonna say Is that a tequila sunrise crank let me have that 4k shad this is actually the one i had a bunch of luck with um on the jerk bait but it's like blue gold up top then just down into a pearl Real simple color, but I had a lot of luck with that this year. And last but not least, I grabbed an Ozark Cross here. Green pumpkin, much more natural color. It's got a little bright, almost orangish red on the back. Again, those kind of iridescent blue accents. You can see it's got the blue spots on it. And then a very natural yellowish green belly. But just a real good natural kind of craw color pattern. Okay, last but not least, I grabbed some of their lipless crankbaits. So this is the Quake 70 in Blue Gilla. It's got the little darkish color on the eye. It's got that uh, kind of bluegill teal color on it. It's got the iridescent fades to it, yellow. It's funny now that I paint my own lures, I pay a lot more attention to like lure painting and lure coloring on a lot of the, the factory stock stuff that you buy at the store. Uh, you know, obviously some of it's overkill. Would it matter if this was, you know, toned down? No, probably not. But you just kind of take appreciation for this stuff, knowing how hard it is to actually paint one of these. But Man, the colors on that dude are awesome. I grabbed a Rayburn Gill, which is kind of a red into a gold. Again, good for those kind of dirtier stained waters on those sunny days. Gold does real well. I grabbed another one of those Shad Scales. Again, you can see those kind of reflective holographic scale looking deals there. Again, your Shad color kind of green up top into your pearl belly. 
Had to go bright again. I grabbed a tiger craw. Look at that. Neat colors, kind of that orange blending in down to that yellow. It's got the tiger stripes on it, craw. Like it. And then a mudgill, which to me reminded me of like a green sunfish. Those real bright, vibrant yellows and oranges. I liked it. Cool looking lipless there. I think that'll do well in some ponds around here. And to finish off the unboxing, some more lipless crankbaits. This is called the Snatch 70X. Now, I honestly don't know what the difference is. I looked online. I couldn't really tell what the difference between the two was. Obviously, they have a different shape. I don't know if it's just if you prefer a different shape profile over the other. Let me grab these. So they have a different sound. Not really. The Snatch versus the Quake. I honestly don't know what the big difference is between the two. Obviously, they do have a different shape here. Uh, but I don't know if one's better at doing one thing over the other. This kind of reminds me more of like a red eye shad type shape. That's kind of the difference too. Comment below and let me know if you've used these, what the difference is. Uh, I'm not sure. That might make a cool thumbnail right there. I grabbed one called Piggy Bank. It's that chrome, but you can see it's got a little pink on top. I just like the chrome aspect to it. Great on those sunny days and a little bit cleaner water. Sunfish Scream, again, going with those dark, really, really vibe. Did I just say dark? Bright is what I meant. Bright, vibrant colors. Yellows, oranges, kind of a little bit of green on top. I grabbed a chrome thread fin. Look at that guy. Again, it's like your chrome. That's kind of hard to see. To me, this reminded me of like a chrome sexy shad. Look at that. Chrome kind of flash to it. It's got the sexy shad stripe going up into the blue. I like that. Last but not least, pretty similar to that, except it's called chrome magic. It's got the green up top. So the chrome up into the green. I just wanted a couple different chrome colors. I like that. It's kind of got that chartreuse line in it too. Cool colors. But that weighs five eighths of an ounce. That's the Snatch 70X. Again, I don't know what the difference is. Both of them look cool. But comment below, let me know out of all of those, what are you the most excited to see me fish in 2021? Again, I can't believe it. 2020 is over. It's been a great year. I cannot thank all of you enough for the support watching these videos. I'm going to have more giveaways coming. I've got some new stuff planned. I'm going to keep doing the boxes, the beginner type box things, uh, putting those together and sending those out to somebody that can use it. So tonight I have to give a shout out to Jadon C. Uh, he wanted to see that uh, best lures of 2020. I just did that one. If you haven't seen that, I'll put it at the end of the thing. But uh, thank you, sir, for watching. And again, thank you so much, everybody else. My channel, I cannot believe we are creeping up on 100,000. For some silly Midwest uh, boy here in Iowa, that's pretty crazy. I know for a lot of you, you might think, oh, a ton of people get that. For me, it's a, it's a huge achievement. So that's enough. I got to get to editing. A bunch of cool six cent stuff. Comment below and let me know if uh, there's some other unboxings you want to see. Uh, I've got some fun unboxings from some uh, smaller companies coming up. So uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Happy New Year to everyone. Be safe. Uh, don't drink and drive. Stay home if you got other crazy people around you. But uh, I'll see you next year.